Broadcasting live, this is KMA Talk Radio, life, liberty, and the pursuit of fine cigars. With your hosts, Honest Abe and Adam K. the Brewmeister. Listen to the show anywhere in the free world at kmatalkradio.com. I like to smoke them like some rich churches. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting edition of KMA Talk Radio, at home edition, broadcasting live. I am Adam K. the Brewmeister. Welcome, loyal listeners, libertarians, lovers of the leaf, everyone out there in, uh, well, quarantine land. We really hope that you are washing your hands and not touching your face, because, well, <laughs> it's the right thing to do. With me, as always, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Honest Abe. Good morning, everybody. And, of course, everyone's favorite extraordinaire, Paul. Hi. But, but, is, but, it, but is he? It, I don't is know. Is he really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He's got the producer's perspective now. So show, he's, uh, show, show, show your new head, Paul. Show your shaved head. Yeah. It's not that new. It's kind of what I always do. I just no. My, wife, that, my they, wife's doing it a little bit closer these days. I think you need a straight razor, straight razor that, man. There's a there's a number of reasons why I don't want a straight razor. It has nothing to do Pick with it. the look. Pick it. Come on, man. What, Pick it. What's one of the number of reasons? Just curious. I don't. I, I have a sensitive. I have sensitive skin. See, I don't want to get into this. I have of very sensitive. You have skin. sensitive skin. Of course, you do. Sensitive from what? I, Many years. I, of I have sensitive skin. Oils? To the sun. No, not necessarily to the sun. Like razors. Razors hurt it. Really? So, well, I, I just you can throw, I throw like some nair. You can throw some nair. You can throw some nair on it. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Put chemicals on sensitive skin. You ever use nair before? Uh, no, can't say that I have. <laughs> well, come on, Paul. Let's do it live on air. Nair your in, head. Back nair in the your day. Head. <laughs> back in the day when I was young and in fit, I I tried nair a couple times to shave nair my chest, on, and it was. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Well, that's what it's for. To, to shave your chest for what? Your chiseled look? When I, when I was in good shape, yeah. I want to Define see a picture from shape. HP. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to see any picture from any point in your childhood where you had a chest worthy of shaving your hair. Yes, 100%. At any given point in history, you come out of the womb. I'll find pictures. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time at the beach, man. I, I just want to see what this infant worthy chest that you had at the moment that warranted shaving your chest hair with yeah. nair. Is that actually a time in your life when you were, you know, continuing to uh, Dude, is, button your pants, by the way? Right. right. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, is such, that is such a caption contest if I've ever seen one. I don't know if I'm ready to share that. <laughs> oh yeah. You see Paul with a bare a bare chested Paul in good shape. Come on. <laughs> My wife would. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, you have to dig one of those pictures up. I just gotta see this. If you're willing to go to the beach and shave your chest hair, why are you share afraid to share it now? Mm -hmm. Or do you just think depressed. your it's judgment really depressing. Your, It's okay. That, that's and what happens not, when life gets old. All those pictures get depressing. I mean, but it's also re all relative too. I mean, I, I'm I'm in pretty bad shape right now, so anything <laughs> anything was better. <laughs> Are you currently wearing your elastic pants, Paul? Yeah, but I don't, I'm not putting on regular pants when I'm at home. Like I'm I'm wearing you know like like athletic shorts, like basketball shorts. But you have know, you worn, have you worn regular pants at all in the last two months, really? Yeah, I have. I, I when I go shopping, when I go to the store, I, I wear regular shorts. I mean, here in Florida, I don't really wear pants unless we go out to like dinner or something. But I wore I've worn shorts a couple times. I had to run into the office yesterday for an hour or so uh, to pick up some things. So I, you know, I had that. I, I wore shorts there and a t-shirt. You know, my normal work attire. Mm -hmm. So you're but, still in quarantine mode. You're still staying home. Our office is still closed as of right now. Yeah, so I'm I'm still home, and we're with the with the baby. They're they're recommending we wait till he starts his first round of shots before we start like really really getting out there. But you know we're doing like 
outdoor stuff, going to parks, and and uh, we've brought Axel, the one and a half year old, to the pool. Mm-hmm. Our pools are open here. Oh, actually, only one of them is open, so they can tr- control how many people are in there. But uh, they didn't. They didn't open. They didn't open our clubhouse or pool or anything. They didn't open any of them. <laughs> They opened yeah. one of ours, but they, they took a bunch of furniture away, and there's a lot of rules when you're in there. But uh, there's no guests allowed right now, and it's it's only residents. And but uh, we've gone we've gone five or six times because he's such a, a swimmer, and he it's been fine. I mean, there's, there's been nobody there. I think one time we went, there was one person there, and I just set my laptop out on you know on a on a chair w- with me, and I do work while he's swimming in the pool with Stephanie. Mm-hmm. But they, I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't open they didn't the pool. Even, they didn't even open up the tennis courts or anything. Wow. Yeah, tennis courts are closed. Our gyms are closed. But I don't, I, I don't I, have a pool in my backyard. What, Most people do here. But I, but I have what's to with, But what's with the tennis courts? I mean, it's like the most distancing game possible. That's my core point. Yes. I, I don't understand that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's true when you think about it. In a nutshell. I mean, you, there's there's not a contact sport. There's no reason for you ever to get near each other in a game of tennis. That because is true. my daughter, my daughter used to do lessons two to three times a week. Has stopped, and you know we, you know we haven't been able to you know do it. And we were hoping when they when they opened Palm Beach County that they would open our tennis courts, but our uh, our uh, HOA decided that it was they weren't ready. I wonder if they'll give us discounts on our HOA fees since we haven't been able to. <laughs> <laughs> not happening no chance in hell so <laughs> have you met the people on the hoa boards <laughs> yeah one of them's my neighbor he's probably watching right now hey buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we're, we're still in pretty much full quarantine mode here we have flights up to new york for the baby's christening in um in june I, right now we're keeping them we, we can cancel up until the day before i, I think we might we might still go at the end of June. Well, my one of our employees' dad is basically on his deathbed, and oh, um, Sorry yeah, and, and, and no, yeah, I mean, and he wasn't going to go, and I was urging him to go, and he was very concerned about going, and uh, he ended up going, but it's in Rhode Island, and he's he could fly into Rhode Island and out of Rhode Island going back, but there's four places still coming back from that you have to be quarantined if you fly. Which I kind of really don't understand because there's connecting flights everywhere. So how does that really work, right? So I don't know. Well, New York but is one yeah. of them, right? New York, California is that? I'm, I'm assuming. Louisiana, Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, and California. I think it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. But um, but um, he he thinks he had it already. He was like deathly ill for like two weeks back in December, oh, and geez. like like. Oh yeah, like deathly ill before like anybody was really kind of really talking about it here. So he kind of believes he has it anyway. He had it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean my my parents flew about a week and a half ago and they said there were 18 people on a flight that could have 200 people and every, you know everybody except for like two people were wearing masks and gloves. So and and the airport <clears> was empty. They they flew out of Orlando and imagine that airport being completely empty. My dad sent us pictures. Actually, I can share them on KMA. Literally, not another soul in that grand lobby where you where you go to the gates. Mm-hmm. Not not one soul there in in the Orlando airport. And TSA, same thing. It was it was unbelievable to look at. But I don't know. We'll see. You know, we're we're gonna just play it by ear. If if things are back to somewhat normal there and they can do the christening, then we'll probably go up and probably stay for a couple of weeks since I'm working remote still. Um, that way we don't have to fly so close together to stay up for, you know, 14 days or something. Um, but it's, it well, still feels, it's still nerve wracking to think that we're going to fly with two kids during this. Some news story broke yesterday. I saw uh, a pharmaceutical company claims they have the cure. Or they don't, they haven't tested it in humans, but they've tested it in a Petri dish that it 100% blocks the coronavirus. Really? So wait, yeah. is it a is it a cure Sorrento. or is it a vaccine? Sorrento, Sorrento. it's a cure. Sorrento. Huh. Um, if I find if I find the link during the show, I'll post it. I mean, uh, they claim they've had one hundred percent effectiveness on it. So they haven't done human trials yet. They're going for like an FDA like speed thing, and they say they can have like two hundred thousand units made in a month. 
I mean, but that's the scary thing. Think about this, like drugs that get sped through the process. What, like, would you take <clears throat> something like that? Or, or it's only to take if you have it to save your life. It's only, it's only to take if you have it. Okay. Now, now they were saying that it can also be taken as a preventative measure too. But right now, obviously they would give it to people who have the virus and are, 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 in, you know, affected and, and, and you know, may die. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's, that's why you would use this. Cause it's like, think about like pills, like thalidomide when that was approved by the FDA and, and what it did to kids. Like, I don't know. It, there's weird things that could happen with drugs, like awkward side effects that might be worse than the coronavirus. I think it's about as dangerous as eating chicken these days. <laughs> Why is I don't understand. Is I mean, dangerous? whatever. We, no, all the food. When you think about all the the, the, the the genetically modified and chemicals and additives and blow ups and preservatives they put in everything we eat. I mean, it's like it's a gamble every day living. <laughs> I don't know. This is a this is a drug that doesn't have a history behind it. So you really think that chickens on an equal playing field is that uh, no but no, I, bet, I bet you when you add up all the carcinogens we eat daily and crap we put in our body daily that they pump into all the food that we eat it's, it's, you know i mean i mean just let me tell you something if if you had corona would you con- contemplate not taking it if i well see i'm in a different situation though because i don't think i would die from it mm-hmm. if i if i genuinely thought i was going to die if they were telling well, me that here, i wasn't going to make it yeah I would well, here's the, here, here's the problem Right. By the time you think you might die, you'll be unconscious. Well, I'll give those, I'll give those uh, ventil- things to my wife. On a, ventil- on a ventilator. Speaking of, did you get your life insurance policy yet, Paul? <laughs> it's in the works. <laughs> it's been in the works for two years. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, Dude. by the way. It doesn't matter because, do you know, 99% of life insurance policies don't cover deaths from pandemics? You know, that's one of those. T- look, at, look at your life insurance policy, Abe, unless you have like- not just. Not- not just your life insurance policy, your business insurance policies, a lot of policies. Yeah, it's it that's it's such BS, man. Eh, acts of God, what can we say? Well, any death is an act of God, right? Start a pandemic policy. Yeah, I guess it would be a million dollars just to insure yourself. Right. <laughs> right. If only we were not joking, and yes, it's definitely probably going to be, yeah. Adam, yeah. do you have life insurance? No. Why? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Who do he leave, uh, go to? leave money to? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he'd leave money to his uh, grandmother or somebody. I don't know. His sister. What? What? what no. Why, why would I put money into a life insurance policy? I have nothing to insure. What happens if you? What happens if you die tomorrow? Where does all your stuff go? Uh, probably goes to auction. <laughs> I mean, it gets sold off yeah. to some random whatever. Oh. Yeah. oh. Would your roommate get anything? Why? No. I'm sure my parents <laughs> sell it all off. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess at least you have I, a plan. I, I, I own both the TVs, so he could keep the TVs. How's that? All right, good. That's so on generous. record. Yeah. So <laughs> generous of you. And, and, you know, most of the furniture in the house that I own. Yeah, he can keep that. <laughs> you can keep all the stuff I got at Ikea. Isn't that a little depressing to you? Paul. Why? Paul. Uh, hold I on, mean, I'm going to. Yeah, and I really don't think any of our audience cares about what happens with Adam's belongings after you go there. That's some fascination that only you have with Adam. Yes, very true. All right. Well, that's well, fine. I, mean, I, I just. Why don't we move on to our guest? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are pleased this week to welcome back to KMA Talk Radio, uh, Mr. Rafael Nadell, now of Altidus USA. Rafael, thank you for being here, sir. Rafael, oh. you have to unmute yourself, sir. There's a there's a mute button there. Oh. Can you, Rafael? Can you hear me? You have to click. The, I can the, hear. There you go. There we okay, go. Perfect. All right. <laughs> there he is. How are you guys? The things of life, uh, things, right? I'm learning all this. Uh, I can make cigars. I enjoy smoking cigars, but all these computer things is new to me. So I apologize. <laughs> Not a I problem. Figure, I figure with as much as you've been on the computer these last five or six weeks, you become a pro. I, I am learning, but I still, it's still 
this was a change of device for this particular one. And uh, I think my dog was uh, barking in the back. So I want to make sure you guys, uh, um, you know, you were having such a nice conversation about uh, the virus and the things and the and the pants and all these things. So I want to make sure. <laughs> So, speaking which Raphael, when was the last time you put a suit on? Because you're usually a well-dressed guy. Well, let me tell you, I swear, I swear that last week, I didn't have to have anything in the morning. I dressed up myself. I was going to die if I had another <laughs> day of, uh, of these uh, pants. I uh, stretched pants, and I just dressed up. Today, I only got the... The shirt, right? So I, you know, you, you don't want to see the speedos underneath. But anyway, so um, but uh, but I, uh, yeah. So the other day I did it, man. I I put my tie on and I, you know, I just needed some resemblance of uh, regular life for me. Yeah. Absolutely, that's a completely un, a completely understandable, and I can't blame you whatsoever. So how but, long have you guys had your office shut down for, or have you been working on a minimal basis? Yeah, so I think uh, right now, I, I think the last week that we work, uh, it was uh, somewhere in the March 17, 18 days uh, mm -hmm. when the whole thing went crazy. Um, uh, that week before, we were kind of worried about it. And then uh, we, we actually um, started working from home uh, around that time. So you can say about 45 days now. Let me tell you, it is, uh, you know, you have, you have to adapt. And so one of the things that I tell my, my employees uh, I was at the Galapagos Islands in October last year. And one of the things is, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent, but the, 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 the species, right, that I heard there, the species that can, can uh, evolve and can adapt. And uh, this has been an adapting game for all of us. It's, it's, it's a crazy thing, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, it's funny because I'm looking, working. I think, I, I actually think we're all smoking the same cigar. That is correct. I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Well, th thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do have a bunch of other ones here with me. As I what's am, the odds? Um, what, See, what cigar is that? What's the odds of that? Ooh. That cigar. Well, this is, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is uh, the Agent Room Cuatro Nicaragua uh, Maestro, and it's... Um, as, as you guys know, and I hope uh, some of our, some of your viewers, and if uh, know that it's the number one cigar of this year according to Cigar Aficionado. And by the way, I, I was writing to Cigar Aficionado. I want a rain check, right? Uh, this is not a year to be the Cigar <laughs> Aficionado of the year. Can, can I right. do that? And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's there's no rain check, but oh my God, what a what a year! So now I'm gonna remember this year for those two things, right? The mm -hmm. The pandemic and the cigar of the year. That's crazy. <laughs> so uh, this is the first time you've been on since you guys got that um, announcement, which happened in December. And, I mean, yeah. what, did you guys have any idea or any thought that this was going to happen? No. And, 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 you know, anybody that has taken it, you can tell you, uh, you can tell you that, no, it's, uh, it's a complete surprise. It uh, uh, which we we wish we knew in advance or a little hint, right? So you look at the whole year ratings and mm. and the ones that. But I remember the day before uh, it was a Thursday that um, uh, number two Padron anniversary was uh, was uh, was announced, and I I my my dreams of having anything on number one, you know, it's very far. And we already had the number ten with A. Shortman. 175th anniversary. Uh, so in the same week, that was the first one that was announced that week uh, on Monday, and then obviously this one on Friday. We didn't think there was going to be a chance whatsoever. So I uh, I turned off my phone that morning. I said, let's forget about it, and that was a very very happy surprise. Rafael, let me let me clarify for some of our listeners here because um, you know I think a lot of people know you from Altus USA right now, but Aging Room currently is still a separate company, right? It's not an acquisition of Altus USA. And that's a company that you own, I believe, with Hank Bishop, right? You guys are partners. Right. So that's, yes, that's, uh, that's the, you, you guys are partners. Altus currently has a distribution agreement, right? They're distributing the product for you? That's correct. That's and correct. So, well, it's, uh, yeah, so it's the, 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 the brand itself is owned by Hank. Uh, myself, my wife, and uh, and uh, and uh, Hoshi Blanco, right? So Tabacalera Palma. So we right. created the and we did a distribution. 
agreement for uh, with Altadis USA. And then as part of that uh, strategic alliance, I became member of the Altadis, now part of the Tabacalera USA, which is the mother company in the United States that houses the Casa de Monte Cristo, the JR uh, Cigar, and Altadis USA. And I took a position with them uh, for as a uh, head of product capability, which is uh, doing the blend for all of the different, uh, for all of the different other brands. And in addition, obviously, the, they distribute uh, our cigars. So that's uh, been a very interesting. And now I'm uh, also heading the marketing department and it's been, listen, a tremendous learning and what an opportunity. I want to say thank you to my boss. He's, uh, he's, he, I'm sure he's listening, Javier Estades. And, um, it's, uh, by the way, he thought that I work for your show because every morning, sometimes on Saturday morning, he calls me and says, hey, I'm sorry, let me get back to you. And I am on KMA, right? But I'm listening. I'm not working, right? <laughs> so he thought. So today I'm sending him, but don't you do every Saturday? I say, uh, I listen every Saturday. I'm here today because I'm sure you guys know I am a big fan of the show and I listen every Saturday. It's part of my routine. And um, I, I enjoy my Saturday. Okay. Most of the Saturdays I don't travel. I'm, I've been for the last uh, few months uh, trying to stay home on Saturdays. So when I'm here, I sit down, grab a cigar, my cup of coffee, and listen to you guys. Very entertaining. Thank you. We, we got a question from uh, one of our uh, fans listening right now. Where were you when you first heard that your cigar won Cigar of the Year? That's a great question. Well, I, what were you doing? I, I, don't know if I, can say. I don't know if I can say. Well, let me tell you. Uh, it's, it's like <laughs> a, a – well – it is, it is a funny story. It is, uh, but, uh, okay, so I will say, and I don't know if it's, uh, you, you're not going to, we're not like limited by the words we can say. So let's no, say, you say what you want. I, I, it's scary, it's scary. So that, that Friday morning, I had just had a, a, a surgery a few days before, a hernia surgery. And uh, it went that morning, I had an appointment for a uh, checkup, right? And I went to the to the doctor's office. My surgeon happened to have the last name. The last name is Placencia. It's Raul Placencia. He's the brother of uh, both Nestor Placencia. So uh, we're friends. He's a one of amazing, amazing uh, doctor, and one of the only ones that doesn't tell me to stop smoking. So I definitely <laughs> go to that doctor, right? So that day, you have to picture this in your mind. I am in the wedding room. I turn on my phone because I'm in the wedding room. There are other people. Finally, he asked me to, to the secretary asked me to go inside. I am there. Uh, I took in some cigars. Uh, actually, not this one, but a Monte Cristo 50 as a gift for him. And uh, and you have to picture this. This guy is, 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 uh, is I have my pants down. I'm sitting in the table. And this guy with a glove is touching my balls, right? It's like... Uh, Holding, holding my balls, and and the secretary <laughs> come in, and the phone was ringing, but he was not taking the phone because uh, you know he would, you know he was busy with the hands, and uh, oh my god, and the secretary, yeah, the secretary comes in, and uh, the assistant it, it opens the door, I you know hear this guy, and uh, and it, it, it and then she says, oh by the way, uh, doctor, I don't know what happened, but the Rafael is getting so many calls. As a matter of fact, your brother is calling. Carlos Padron is calling. Uh, can, he said, well, it might be something. Can you put it through? And so I get a phone call, right? And I'm talking. I say, oh, yeah, number one. While, while, this, while the doctor says it with my balls in the hand, that was, and the secondary, right? And the secondary uh, watching, right? And obviously, you know, you, you know, some of us are like a, a stage fright, fright type of thing. So you see everything. Rah, rah. So this was an amazing moment, embarrassed moment. It was like, oh my god, out of this goddamn world. It was just so funny, man. It was oh my moment. god. I don't know if you see the Seinfeld, the Seinfeld oh episode my god. when yours, yeah, with, with the Seinfeld episode, there is a Seinfeld episode when yours jumps into the pool or it's a, some, yep. the sea is very cold and it's, it's not normal like this. It's not normal like this. Oh. <laughs> this was, I, was, I was in the pool. Situation. So that's oh that's God. I tell you it's pretty it was pretty I, out there right I'm just, that is great I, I'm just praying that this is the first time you've shared that story I have to tell you man yeah I I, I don't know I've been drinking coffee I I feel like with you guys at home so I just I now looking back I swear I shouldn't have said that as I was talking about this I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> that could be I, that could be the greatest 
cigar story, at least it has to do with the number one cigar of the year that I may have ever heard. Yes. <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, and it's quite embarrassing, by the way, because everything that happened at once, you know, so it's, uh, it's it, was, it was a funny thing. Eh? So I only have one question then. When the doctor was done fondling your balls, did you say, have a cigar? <laughs> well, tell me, no. tell me you had a cigar to give him, please. I have taken the other cigars, the Monte Cristo 50. I didn't have the oh, cigars. So the, first oh, no. I did, the first question I did, are these the cigars? And I said, no, they're not. Uh, okay, so bring it out. So, yeah, that was the first question he asked. Are these the cigars? And no, they were That's not. Funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an <laughs> okay. interesting thing. Just, just end the show now. I don't know how we get better from here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So have you, have you told... Other like do, do the people that work with you know this story or is this is this kind of like just you and friends? No, know about I, it I I have kept it. You know, uh, you know, we obviously you know you don't want to tell your people this story so much because of it's uh, you know it's uh, I don't know in this age of uh, Dude, human resources type of that's, thing. Uh, that's a historic story. You should do a whole marketing campaign about how this story and when you first heard you won number one cigar of the year. <laughs> Not to it, mention, get, I should, did, everybody's getting checked. So. <laughs> I did mention it right after that. I went to, right after the doctor I was very close to uh, to my father's uh, office, right? So not my father, but my father's cigar's office. So mm -hmm. I went to see Yanni and uh, right after that, and I did share the story. I was coming from the doctor. She didn't think I was going to go. I had a meeting to stop by. And I had to schedule it. And she said, I thought you were not coming. I said, no, I kept my word. I was. I said I was going to come. And I did share that story. So that was funny in addition to having some wine that day in the morning, which normally I don't do. Yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, that was a very interesting story. That's for sure. Yeah, I just can't. I can't say that many people could say in their lifetime that some of the greatest news they've ever received is at the same moment they were getting their balls fondled. I mean, <laughs> I know. I am by Placencia. I mean, you know, right to boot. Uh, it's like Cosmic brother. I mean, every yeah, it's Cosmic. Every related. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Oh, <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Oh, so uh, we, we lost Ra Adam. Ra <laughs> oh, yeah, Raphael. Um. For those of for those of our listeners who haven't you know heard about the number one cigar, uh, what went into the blend, and just give us a little bit of the background on the creation of this product. So yeah, uh, yeah. So th yes, thank you for taking this in a in a different direction. You know, I had enough of this. Uh, I'm sure I'm gonna uh, regret this saying this, but anyway. So <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, so the the Agent Room Quattro Nicaragua. This actually is a follow up the Agent Room Quattro. F55 that it was released back in 2013, mm -hmm. and at the time I team up with um, uh, with uh, Hoshi Blanco and we did uh, our Quattro F55. It was the first release of the Agent Room Quattro. We call it Quattro because it's a square, right? It's a, it's a square, and it's Spanish Quattro means uh, Quattro four. So we did it like that. It was uh, it was very very recently when we started uh, releasing the Agent Room. It was the second year. So we did Age Room Quadro F5. That year got the number two cigar of the year and um, it got 95 uh, rating. And that was fantastic for us because, you know, uh, all this attention had little uh, put us on the map. I was coming from the Oliveros days and then the Swag days. And this was definitely going in a different direction. And then um, that one was all Dominican with the wrapper, which is an Indonesian, um, um, genuine Indonesian Sumatra wrapper grown there. So that was a very unique blend, very different. So this uh, was a follow-up. We wanted to do it before in Nicaragua, but then we did the association with uh, with um, um, uh, Altadis, and we decided to, I had to do some of the blends and things. But we had actually started working on this blend a while ago with my good friend and collaborator, AJ Fernandez. And, you know, for those of you uh, that I'm sure many people are, are familiar with AJ, AJ has a lot of great things. He started on this uh in this uh, journey in 2003 when he came to uh, to Nicaragua, right, from Cuba. And with nothing, and he had worked extremely hard. His family of Placencia as well, their cousins, and his father had worked with Placencia for about 20 years uh, processing tobacco. So these guys, they have a tremendous experience. So uh, to be able to join with AJ because he has uh, an amazing amount of tobacco and the fermentation process is unique. So we took... 
tobacco from his best farm. And by the way, he's doing something very unique as well, because what he's done is something that has been done in Cuba. He got every single farm, right? Different varieties of Cuban seed tobaccos uh, that he's growing. And each farm has been associated with the best variety for that particular farm. All are tobacco from um, Esteli, so it makes it a bolder, flavorful cigar, but extremely well aged. And this is a Sumatra wrapper grown in Esteli, which gives it another definition. So it's very unique. It's 100% uh, Nicaragua, as you can see, and very unique blend because it's it's all Esteli. So it's um, normally you use in Nicaragua blends tobacco from different areas, the fantastic other areas like Condega, Jalapa, and uh, of my tepe, but this is a, a pure Esteli one, so it's intriguing. It's it's different for me to make it, and that was a it was a trip of working on this. That's for sure. You know, a, a lot of our listeners may not know, right? But you've been in the industry a very long time, right? You had some very old brands early in the days. Um, I don't know. Was Oliveros the first one? Yes, yes, it was. It was so you so had, basically. You had Oliveros. Um, at some point, you had one that was XL. Yes, Oliveros Excel. So we tried back in 2015, we tried uh, 60 ring size, 63 ring size. Uh, we, we tried to do different things. It was a very bolder cigar at the time. It had a broad leaf uh, binder, Brazilian uh, Matafina wrapper. Uh, I mean, we tried to do these different blends right from the beginning. But Oliveros was the first one. Because and that, everything that goes started. way back. That goes to what year, Oliveros? 2000, Oliveros was an older brand that I acquired later on in 2002. And at the right. time, they were making mostly flavor cigars, right? Right. So we brought it from flavor cigar to regular cigar. That transition was very easy because when you associate something with flavors, it was very different putting it, the chain in it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then you and, had and my, that's and, how, Sorry. Go ahead, Raphael. No, no, no. I say that's how it evolved. From Oliveros, it went to Swag Cigars. And then Swag. You know, after the age, Swag. Yeah, that's why. Are any of those brands still on the market anywhere? They they are in the market in some in some limited capacity, but we are took it out of our when we joined Altadis, we the, we wanted to uh, um, concentrate. You know, Altadis uh, uh, portfolio is very big. You got the right. Market, so they and the Roman Julia, the, the Trinidad, we bring him back. It was very difficult to have so many. We had also the Bohem, La Bohem. So we had many different ones that it was very different. So we thought the best bet was concentrate on any room. But it's still on the market, some of them from, from before. But we're not selling at the moment. So we want to see the good things that they're all brands and blend from, from the, you know, uh, grandfather. Because yeah. FDA, yeah, yeah. So we keep it in the market for uh, in limited basis because we want to make sure we uh, we continue um, to 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 uh, uh, to be part of the FDA regulations and, and agreeing with the regulations. So we want to make sure that uh, that we we do it in a limited basis. But no, but not not countrywide. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So I mean, is there a follow up scheduled now? to this or do you guys have something else in the works i mean we're coming up on that time where everybody starts pushing new product into the market i mean some of that's kind of well, been pushed to the side but a lot of it's supposed to have been coming out in the next couple of months from a lot yeah, of these companies right. so yeah I mean, have right. you anything aside what you got stuff that's still working or you're still cooking up yeah yeah we actually you know because that's obviously the, the any room is part of the the big the big uh um, amount of different different brands. We have actually had a schedule for all of them, and uh, you you you're right, Abe. Uh, this is the time that every, you know a lot of this thing was coming up, and yeah. we have to remove everything. I mean, we kept uh, an schedule, though we we remove it a little bit. The new Roman Juliet uh, Reserva Real. It was supposed to be a month ago. We are launching it this year. In that one, we did some uh, the TPE in uh, in the, in uh, Vegas. We did some some teasing of it. We actually did some into a small introduction to present it, but it's been released. Actually, it started shipping yesterday, uh, um, the, but everything has been kind of been pushed back uh, because obviously a lot of the retail stores close uh, curbside, things like that. We felt it was. So yeah, we're working on the agent room in, in a new release with a new size that uh, 
uh, that is, is coming up. We also are going back. We Within the in room line, we have something the small batches, right? So we have the pura cepa, which is something like this. Then we have the bean number two, which is uh, um, a follow up to the to the initial bean number one that I did. Uh, so this is a different line. This is a line that we do the the small batches, and within that we are doing a pelo de oro. We bring him back a pelo de oro. This is an amazing cigar. Also, uh, the tobacco is grown in in Nicaragua by Eje. We did a small release a few years ago. Uh, pelo de oro is a seed, right? It's a seed that a Cuban heritage. Uh, Seed is a very small uh, plant. Leaf. It only has yeah. six to seven, six to seven leaves. So it's very unique, very flavorful, right? So we are bringing that as well, uh, that back. And then for next year, we have an amazing new Quattro line that uh, is going to be really uh, working on. But again, the days now, every day we change it, right? So we we don't know what's going on. You know, you know, Raphael is a professional when he has the boxes ready. <laughs> that's, that's, that's some real pro right there. Look at that. So, well, let me tell you. You even got the number one so many of these. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's a pro. He's got it down. No, so, Rafael, you, you've kind you, of I'm come 30. alive. You, you've kind of come alive during this whole quarantine situation. I mean, you did the marathon. I, I'm saying online, like digitally with these live broadcasts. Right. You did the well, whole marathon. And, go ahead, Abe, because I'll, you were part of that. Well, no, I mean, I'll venture to say, and you know, just running off on your comment, right? I think for the first time since I've been in this industry, right? Um, Altus has a face of a company, right? They never, they never really had it, even with Jose Sejas. They tried to do it, you know. Um, Jose was always in the in, in the background making cigars, and I think at one point they tried to to get him more well known. They even actually bought him to America to start doing events that didn't take off. Then they had the group of de maestros, which was great. Right. But then, you know, you got 10 guys traveling around the country. It's not really practical and they really never came to face. But I think, uh, with your social media presence, especially during this quarantine time, um, and I don't know if I'm the first to say it, but I'm just going to say it. I think that you pretty much now officially have become like yeah. the face of Altidus USA, which is an extremely hard thing to do. Right, there's no real right. face of Davidoff. I know they're trying to get, you know, Hanky's son, but you know, it's, it's very hard to get the blenders to be the face of a company, right? It, it's it's right. seldom it hasn't happened. I mean, even AJ Fernandez, as famous as he is, and he is the face of his company, he's he's not here interacting with the people. It just it's hard. So, um, General hasn't done it, and it may, it may never do it. But I, I mean, they got a couple people that interact. But I think you technically have become the face. And I, I think it's a monumental achievement. No, thank you. And, you know, I, and again, this has to do, uh, again, with my boss, Javier Estade, who had a vision. Uh, you know, uh, again, companies evolve, brands evolve, and things have to do what you need to do, what it is important to that uh, survival and continue uh, uh, relevance of the brand. So we, we had a... Uh, we had to look at a different area of flavor profiles that I think some of our brands were missing. We have fantastic mild cigars. We we really do. We really do something that most companies cannot do. If you try to have the same blend for 25 years or for 30 years, I can tell you there's no company that can do it. Well, Alta these factories can. They can make the same cigar for 30 years, right? It's an amazing accomplishment. It's, it's consistency, which is the number one important thing when you buy a cigar. But we were lacking in this other segment of uh, more flavorful, more um, uh, um, complex cigars. And that's what we have been moving our brand. But it couldn't be done from here to here all the way. So we have to take the people in the journey, right, of flavors and profile. We want to, we don't want to abandon the other people. So they brought me as the as the head of product capability, and I've been working with the group of Maestro with our third party. We don't have a factory in Nicaragua, so that's a challenge because Nicaragua is one of the, it's the number one uh, region right now, and we don't have a factory. So we, because of my relationship with AJ Placencia, we've been able to work and uh, and and explore that relationship, and I think that's what it makes us apart. And then now. It's all going back to Abel, what we said the other day, uh, what I said before, it was about uh, uh, challenges in your life and taking it the day and, and then and then adjust, right? So uh, social media has become an important aspect of, of what we are. 
I am speaking for myself. I consume news on TV, I mentioned before. I'm not even watching TV anymore because you know why? I mean, this is crazy. Which is not only the pandemic, which is extremely difficult, but also the political aspect of the pandemic that has been taking uh, uh, to, to, to extremes. So I feel great talking to my people like you guys watching your show and, and all of the other podcasts because it's an amazing way of communicating. And we said this is what we have to do. And listen, a week before we talk about that marathon with our marketing team and I say, you know, let's do this. Well, let's prepare for three weeks. And you no, know, next week. And what? Well, well, so listen, the thing is in life, you have to take risk and you have to do it. And let's learn from it. And uh, and and one thing is, though, by the way, it's good for me is that I've been watching you guys for a long, long time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, you know, knew the importance of it. And uh, and that has been a fantastic thing. Yeah. So it's an evolutional thing. That's for sure. So you know, I, I know you brought up the factories. Have you guys reopened the Dominican factories? And I know Honduras is still closed off. Is that still shut down? No, no. Actually, Honduras opened up. Honduras, the government closed uh, completely yeah. all the factories, and and then it opened up first with the 25, with the 50 percent, and this mm -hmm. week on Monday we 100 percent. It has oh, been wow. plans that they have, yeah, they have been going and taking. So obviously, there's a lot of adjustment, a lot of different things that is uh, have been happening because the government has been going and and, and and we present the plan, they come and they do it. And obviously the separation is so physical plan has changed a little or a lot, I would say, because of the separation, how you manage that part, right? The masks, the things, the washing the hands constantly mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, so in Dominican, we, we, we had even more, a, 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 even a greater challenge because Dominica, the government, put uh, one of the things that during the during the night from 6 to uh, I believe 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. at night until 7 a.m. people couldn't move on the streets right so there was no there's no um, uh, public um, still there is no public uh, um, transport and things like that so it's a challenge because it's a it's big factory it's the biggest factory in the world mm -hmm. and it's uh it's 5,000 employees. So how do you do that, right? So we started with 500 and 1,000 something right now. And um, it's been a challenge, uh, but we have been working um, uh, towards the continue. But there is a little bit more difficult. The government has to go again and look at the uh, at the plans and and this. So it's, it's definitely a, a more challenging. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, but it's, it's running in a smaller capacity. We got our first shipment, left the factory under this uh, last week. So it's something exciting. Absolutely. That is a big step, uh, especially considering everything was shut down. And even though you still have guys going in and rotating the polones and everything else. and Yeah, yeah. As any man of fact, you can tell you, man, this has been a test of resiliency in everybody, of uh, passion, of trying hard, or working hard. And, and, and you know, in, in our third world countries, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult, right? Uh, because there are cultural issues and things like that. Uh, so we've been done a lot of training, a lot of education, a lot of things. Nicaragua has been a little bit different because Nicaragua has really never closed completely uh, the government, although the factories on their own <laughs> decided to close and then open up in a different ways, trainings and what have you. So, you know, uh, things are changing and some of this, what is happening here as well, some of these things might stay with us. You know, I'm not sure if we're ever going to have the hand you know, uh, again, this one of these days, right? Or the hawks, you know, the cigar industry. We've been, we've been hawks and shit. You know what? I don't know. They will. They will. Look, I mean, my, my personal position on all this is flip-flopped, right? At first, I didn't think anything of it. I thought everybody was overreacting. Then I got mentally, psychologically freaked out and scared and scared for my staff. I've lost some family. I've lost some family and friends to this. Almost lost some other family. But, and, I, and and I'm high risk, so I, I was very paranoid. Like, you know, my wife, I don't know how she put up with me, like, the first few weeks of quarantine, because, like, you couldn't bring anything in the house. Everything was getting wiped down. And, you know, you get to the point the other day, you get to the point where you just say, you know what, if I get it, I get it. Because, you know, I'm to the mental point, look, this is the way I look at things. And, and I, I, you know, some people are going to get mad. I'm going to say this. Some people are, may agree with me. But if we got invaded by America, if we got invaded by a foreign country, right? Let's just say the Canadians, you know, <laughs> became on a power hungry thing and they invaded us, you know, from the north, right? 
do we as Americans put down our guns and say, come on in? You know, we don't want to lose lives. You know, we don't want anybody dying over this. You know, you, you need to come in and, you know, just do what you're going to do and hopefully we'll survive and be able to have peace. No, it's, it's not what we do. And this, 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 this virus is almost like a war, right? I mean, I, as I look back on it, I think better judgment should have been used, more controls and, and more focused in certain areas where it was needed. And, you know, it just became very un-American, I think. And I think that's how I'm mentally looking at it, saying at this point, um, we're just lying down our guns. We want everybody to close. People still want everybody to close. People are so good about complaining, whether it's we opening too fast, whether we shutting down. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, the only, when you stop living, you lose. That, Absolutely. That's the way I'm looking at it. When we stop living, now I'm not saying we go in blind, right? But just like how I have problems in business or life, I, I try to make the best judgment calls and I try to adapt, but we never just stop, right? You know, as Americans, we, 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 we don't just stop. And this is just kind of what I feel like it's happening now. We're in the state where we're just saying, yeah, okay, we're just going to stop. And it's never been the American way. We thrive and we die. We've died building buildings. We've died building railroads. We've died going to war. We've died defending this country. At some point, it just became unacceptable for anything to die at any reason, right? right you know? Right. At some reason, like death is like something like, oh, my God, people can't die. People die every day. Every day. You know I mean? Well, I, literally, it- I literally told my wife because she was like worried because – <clears throat> you know, about how I felt. And I'm like, look, I mean, I don't know, but I'm not going to stop hugging my kids. I'm not going to start doing a show because my kids are going back to school. I said, guess what? If I die, you got a couple pretty good insurance policies. Throw a kick-ass party, make sure everybody gets drunk, and move on. Because if it's not today, it's going to be tomorrow. Americans have never operated on fear. We pioneered. We went through plague. We discovered territories. It's, I just don't think that we have to stop. I think we have to be smart. We have to make adjustments. I think people are going to, for a while, you know, yeah, we're not going to be hugging and kissing and, and hugging, but we just can't, when you shut everything down, for me, mentally, it's just like saying, okay, take over our country. We're done. And that's the point, that's the point where I've now personally become at it. To quote well, a classic from the 80s, Wolverines! Nobody? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, let me tell you something. Uh, I came to this country looking for freedom of, or, and opportunities, right? And one of the things that I'm always very concerned is when we are taking a, re, a freedom from all of us, or sometimes a little at the time, or sometimes all at the time. America is a very unique country, and it's very difficult. I think, uh, listen, I was in healthcare before. I was a healthcare administrator before I got into the cigar business. So I know the importance of healthcare, and I think that we were afraid based on all these numbers from other countries, that this healthcare system was going to be overwhelmed. But, you know, what sometimes people don't count is the American resilience, right? And the American uh, uh, believing in personal responsibility. What I don't want is people tell me what to do. You need to suggest it. You need to think. But, you know, this decision of who's the winner, who's the ground, what is important to this person, and you should be open on this but not open on this, these are decisions that are very, very difficult. And I think that's not to say that we need to be taking all the measures necessary, but it's up to you and you need to be personally responsible. And uh, and I think it was a moment of fears. I saw it after 911. I saw it after different ones. Fear never wins because that's not what America is all about. Yep. And, uh, and, you know, it doesn't work like in other countries that the government is a solution. My friend, my opinion, the government is never the solution in anything, right? Uh, because then you get politics involved, you get different things. We, America, is are an amazing group of people. I consider myself because I became America. But I can see we travel the world just like you guys do. This is uh, this is uh, a very, very different country. Well, it's yeah. funny you mentioned that, Abe, because that's like, so growing up in New York, after 9-11, uh, our, our show friend, Rudy Giuliani, I, I, I told him when we met with him that it, he's, his words specifically were what got me to get up and go back to class and go back to work because he told us that, he, he said to New Yorkers, if, if we stay home 
and do nothing all the time and, and we're afraid to go out, then they win. The terrorists win if you stay home and shudder yourself. And it was hard getting on public transportation again. It was hard doing... But, but what you're saying is kind of along those lines, although, it, I mean, it's a little bit of a different situation, but at some point we have to go back to to our regular lives, whether, whatever that normal is going to be, but we, we have to start doing that. So, I mean, it sounds like in, you're in the office every day, right? I, I'm, yeah, I'm in the office. I go to work every day now. And, and look, I, I don't want, I, before everybody starts out flowing, hey, my uncle died. Dude, my uncle died, right? People have died gone to going to war. People have died in the military when we don't have war. Right. Dying is part of everyday life. Right. For whatever reasons. And mm -hmm. and I, I just I don't get this mentality that they're going out. You can't live. You can't do anything from a position of fear, which is where they have everybody at. That's where I was at. Right. I was I was right. at the position of fear. Right. And you just can't operate from a position of fear. And 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 I think it's become political. I think there are parties. I mean, I'm not going to get the whole conspiracy thing, but I listen. This fear has driven a lot of political agendas, right? And there's, I mean, I don't even know what's going on. So I, I just don't, I just don't understand it. And uh, I, I just think at some point, using smart decision making and 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 being as responsible <laughs> as you can, you have to start going back or etching toward a normalcy of life. Otherwise, really, listen. Dave Portnoy of Barstool Sports had a great post. Facebook now has like shut it down, right? And it wasn't really nothing bad. He was just talking about it because, you know, when did this go from flattening of the curve, right? Everything was about flattening the curve. Now it's about we need a cure, right? We're not going to open up until we get a cure. What, what, what did this happen? He goes, he goes, I mean, look, I mean, if, if I had to, he goes, now it's my personal choice, but if you're going to tell me, hey, people are going to lose my job, I'm going to lose barstool sports after putting 20 years of my life into it and I got to start over with a nine to five job, I'd rather die of COVID or at least I'd rather take my chances. Right. So, right. It, it's just a personal thing. Right. I mean, what, what nobody talks about, nobody realizes, look, my uncle died. His brother was on a ventilator for 22 days. We thought he was going to go. Luckily, he's in rehab. He's come out. He's doing all right. My other aunt was on a ventilator for nine days. My nephew, her son, never got hospitalized. Went home, had three really, really bad days of being really, really sick. And, you know. I actually know people who have tested positive who didn't know they had it. They got their test results two weeks later and it said they were positive. They never even had a symptom. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A and lot then, of people are getting tested for the antibodies because they're like, I don't know. I had a sniffle a couple of weeks ago. Let me get, yeah. let me check it out. And but, they had COVID. But nobody wants to talk about that. And that's why I kind of got, I had it up to my head and I made a post earlier this week about just the media is just guilty. They're treasonous. They're criminals. I, 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 I think they should just, they should incarcerate all of them because either one they're knowingly doing what they're doing right or they're too stupid and just regurgitating stuff blindly out of ignorance either way they shouldn't be doing their job right because they're just instilling right. this non-reality in everybody and and you know for the first time in my life from 48 years i could say I, I really really don't trust my government and i don't trust the, i mean i mean the media definitely don't trust anything that comes out of me but for the first time like i, I I'm starting to like have psychological issues where I just think that, yeah, man, I don't trust the government. I mean, you always knew the government was corrupt and people getting bribes and kickbacks and you always knew that, but you never really believed that your government could be capable of something really dastardly evil against its own people. And I don't know. I'm starting to entertain those kind of ideas. No, let me tell you, uh, uh, Abe, around those lines, Around those lines, my my wife keeps saying everything she every time she uh, my wife's a psychiatrist and she's dealing with a lot of patients right now that are going through very difficult mental situation because of uh, of uh, what is going on. Oh, I can uh, imagine. And yeah. Also, the fear that is being is being input as well, and the added fear, right? But all but one thing that she always says is the people in the media that are talking about continue closing, keep this forever. They have a job. These people are getting paid. They have a job. Yeah. And so what happened to the rest of us? In, in you know, uh, thanks God, we 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 are doing okay. But uh, but let me tell you, there are a lot of suffering. There's a lot of people without job. The 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 if we keep this, it's very difficult. But the funny part is, they do have a job. It's it's amazing. Oh well, what can you do? But what what were you doing to to work? Why you keep closing? Well, but it's about me. Listen, if I want to go somewhere. That is me. 
I will make my own personal responsibility of what should I do. And I think we are in a different position now that we were a few months ago, but we just didn't know enough about it. But now we know, we know some about it. America, America was built on Americans more than willing to be able to sacrifice, right? We've always made tough decisions. We did what we had to do. And now we got to the point where we don't want to sacrifice nothing. Let's, let's right. devastate this whole country, ruin the lives of millions, right? Because we don't want people dying, which happens every day, right? They don't care that people are getting slaughtered in the streets of Chicago, right? They could care less. They don't care there's people homeless and, and drugged out in, in, in the streets of California, right? But this is a this is a problem that's worthy of shutting down the whole country. Now, I granted everybody's going to jump up. It's not the same. It doesn't spread. But it's it's life. The human race is designed to deal with stuff like this and get past it. That's what we it's done historically. We get exposed to things like this and we work around it. So, anyways. Let's However, not, just, to, yeah. just to put that perspective, right? and I always, whenever we talk and criticize America, and I always want to say in this way, even with all of this, right, even with these difficult things, America is still is the best place to live. And America is an amazing country, not perfect, as especially we heard it before, and there's a lot of these things, but I can tell you, America is the best there is. That's for sure. No. That hopefully and that'll never change, but well, it won't change because it has to do with people like you, 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 and everybody that is watching. You know, it is about the American people, not about the politicians, not about this and not about that. The institutions and the people. You may have this, this, and I'm very optimistic about American always because I in him and I risked my life, my parents risked their life to bring me here in a boat with 300 people to get here. And I can tell you, man, this is an amazing country. Even with all of these things, right? America is the best there is. And we're going to come stronger out of this thing, even with all of these things. Amen. Your lips to God's ears, my friend. Mm -hmm. So let's let's get back to a little bit on cigars now. Mm -hmm. God, God knows the, the world's had enough COVID talk for a while. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you, got, you have a new Romeo coming out. Absolutely. It's a blue band. Tell us about this, Romeo. Let me tell you. And I can't believe I'm, I smoked the I'm, last one last night. Oh, no. Come on. I was going to say, you got to have a box lying around. Come I on. I don't have a box because the box got to the, got to the office. But oh, I, I had the cigar oh. that I smoked the last one last night. This is a, another amazing project. You know, Romeo and Juliet is America's number one brand. But in love with Romeo and Juliet. And uh, what we've done is uh, uh, we are taking uh, our consumers in a different journey, trying to uh, trying to get new profiles or new flavor profiles. So the Reserva Real is one of Romeo and Juliet's strongest brands. Romeo and Juliet uh, Reserva Real is a, is a classic cigar with classic feature, very smooth, very balanced. Uh, uh, and what we've done is we've gone to Nicaragua and we apply a little bit of the Nicaragua Nicaragua flavors to that one. And what, what we believe that we have been able to maintain some of the most amazing features of the Reserva Real now with the Nicaragua. So it's called the Reserva Real Nicaragua, Roman Julia Reserva Real Nicaragua Blue. So it's still a royal, royal color because that's what real means, royal. And we do the royal blue from that. So from the uh, look of the aesthetic, we want to, to say this is an amazing cigar. And I think we accomplished that because uh, Nicaragua, as you guys know, is a land of volcanoes, right? And Nicaragua, uh, uh, the soil is very rich, has a lot of flavor because of the mineral components. And we, we're taking some tobaccos from different areas, mostly Esteli Condega and one from Jalapa. And we put it together. And we uh, uh, believe that we've been able to do the to keep some of the key feature we believe that we the Reserva Real has the smoothness, the balance, uh, and the creaminess. Many times, when we get this uh, description from that cigar Reserva Real, everybody tells it's very creamy. So we've been able to take that and uh, uh, to uh, and add a little bit more complexity and flavor profile from the Nicaragua tobacco. So that's that's a new Reserva. Real that is launching this week. Uh, I started going to the store this week, and it should, some of the stores will receive it tomorrow. And by the way, this is a 
the only cigar I think we've done uh, the lounge during this pandemic, right? And um, we, something very excited. We have a lot of pre-orders on this, and we are very, very excited about it. Let me let me ask you a question, which i I'm probably asked before, and I'm just curious, right? Because as a retailer, my other hat, right, I see all these variations of a name brand. I just think it's easy because the name already has weight. But don't you think at some point there's just too many variations of one name that you start diluting Absolutely. people within your name? Why not just come out with another cigar? Or is, I mean, I'd like to say maybe there's predicate reasons, but this is, this has been going on for decades where they'll make continual variations of a name. And at one point, does it become too much, too many, Raphael? Absolutely. And I, and I think we are at that point now, by the way, we may have been at that point a little bit ago. Right. So sometimes I feel that we, uh, uh, many companies have done an expansion just to bring something new, right? Uh, because the show is coming up. Oh, let me do something. But I was a retailer too. I was a, I had a cigar store and I know your challenge. By the way, I think uh, uh, being a retailer is where everything happens. It's where you see uh, the, the most important part of everything we do. A smaller company, bigger company. This is where you see the results. And we also see the failures at, at this, the good, the bad, and the ugly as a retailer. I was a retailer, so I understand that. And, you know, for example, when Gabby, uh, uh, Gabby Caffey was saying, oh, it's about marketing, marketing, marketing. Well, the thing is to bring different profile that like in everything in life, as you know, sometimes you go too far and there's no doubt about it. And we've done it. Many companies have done it. Um, and and uh, it is it's, it never, it's never uh, a good thing to do. So there have been a, a good thing, I believe, is continue growing the brand with different flavors. Because you like Romeo and Julieta, but your your flavor profile has changed, eh, right? So you were here, and we all know you, Adam. Everybody have seen it that we started smoking this cigar, and then our our palates have continued to develop, right? So we want a brand that it goes with us, and it's actually instead of follow our palate, the brand I believe should should um, should take you on a journey, and I think that's what it is that we do sometimes uh, make mistake. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, there's not a book for these things, right? The idea for 30 years ago, what you do a brand is successful, you keep it forever. But we know that that's not a, that's not the, the the current situation. The American market, and we work around the world, so the American market is very dynamic. People getting something too. So to do something for the heck of just doing something is very bad. And I think we we have all made that mistake. So that's now we need to to do it only when it's uh, essential for the consumer and for the brand. And I think that we have some learning to do. And that doesn't mean we're not going to make mistakes, right? So we might make the most stupid mistakes because that's life. And then you and the consumer are the ones that are going to talk and tell us. That's why we are trying to work mostly more with retail directly uh, to get that feedback to the uh, consumers as well. And, and that is a very important part. You know, it's interesting. Oh, go ahead. No, no, good, good. Oh, so I just wanted to ask you, one of the big news stories that came out at during the whole quarantine was the sale of the company that you work for. Um, is this going to affect Aging Room at all, or are you still going to no. go on, or is this, what, how is that going to change your day-to-day -day life? No, 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 it's not. I think um, what happened, so you know, is... Uh, uh, Altadis uh, USA, which was created this year 20 years ago, uh, when the, the company um, bought Altadis from Spain, bought, uh, bought a subsidiary here and became uh, Altadis USA. Uh, that is part of Tabacalera in Spain, and Tabacalera was part also of the Imperial uh, Cigar Company. And the Imperial brand, as it's called, has is mostly a cigarette and a mass market one. Uh, and they have these. Uh, and by the way, they purchased that in the United States because there was also some other brands like Backwoods, like uh, uh, some other, some other, um, I say like, uh, let me see, uh, uh, Phillips, right? Uh, and, and things like that. So um, have a Tampa, they, they were part of the portfolio. So, uh, but it's clearly, that company is clearly a, a a mass market and cigarette company, right? But it had this division, which also owns half of the Cuban um, Habanos um, cigars. It's a partnership of 50-50. So all of this is, is part of Tabacalera. So what they did, 
is they want to concentrate in the and um, focus in the core business. Like like you know, you guys know as a business uh, as a business owners that sometimes you need to regroup and go and look at your core. And cigars are a very different breed of products than a mass market cigar and for and as a, a cigarette. Because in us, what we're trying to do is we make a better product uh, that is more appealing to the consumer. And uh, it's not the idea of cutting cost or cutting corner, but the idea is to increase the value and how of the brand. How you do that with better tobacco, with better products, with better uh, access to the to the consumer, and that uh, is what is going uh, going on. So the sale happened. Uh, it was announced. I had been announced for before that it was in the process of doing that. Uh, and it finally was announced. And uh, basically, I don't think it's going to have any. Well, I, I know it's not going to have any impact on that. We just want to be continue be focused on bringing every day the best product we get to the consumer. And any room is part of that distribution. And we're going to continue with that. Yeah. OK, good to know. Now, that was a very that was a way of saying a lot and not saying anything. Right. But, but anyway, that's uh, I'm getting good at these things. <laughs> no, no, no. Just kidding. Abe, you're muted. Go yeah, ahead. I got you. Better? <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, are you going into the office at all these days, Rafael? Yeah, actually. Uh, so, we are working uh, mostly for home, as I mentioned. Everybody's working for home. Broward County has been closed. It's opening next week uh, in a very limited basis. Our offices that are located in Broward. Uh, so, we have been out of the office. Everybody's working from home. Um, I go to the office from time to time because that's where we get the achievement. That's where we get the cigars and where we get some of these things. And there's some things that, you know, from everybody that is working from home, there are things at the office that you need and you need to go from time to time. I think we are working harder than ever. We are working more than ever. Uh, for me, the challenge has been to disconnect at home, right? So I do those emails at 1130. I mean, I do those things at, at midnight and I send an email at 1130. I get a response at 12. And I said, well, whatever, you know, you're know, not sleeping. So the, for me, the challenge has been to separate it. So I go from time to time to the office, but I think this is open up a new way of working, right? So talking about the adaptation and things, I think there are a lot of stuff that we can do from home. And we will be continue exploring uh, that those avenues uh, as we move forward, right? Uh, you guys gonna get rid of you gonna get rid of that big rent on that seventh and eighth floor over there in Fort Lauderdale and just have everybody working from home? Yeah, well, <laughs> not working from home because at the end of the day, cigars are one point has to be. It is about us working together, and and I do believe the creativity, right? So uh, working, we have this. Uh, MS Team, uh, Microsoft Team uh, tools, the Zoom tools, the Skype tools, and all these things. But at the end of the day, nothing, nothing, I believe, uh, uh, will will um, uh, will take it, uh, cannot take away from meeting and working together and share ideas. And at the end of the day, what we do is share ideas. Going to the factory, I did a blend testing. Uh, we have been doing same blend testing with our factory via via uh, virtual. Uh, let me tell you, it's not the same where you're next to the guy and say, no. Mm. Uh, well, this uh, it's, it's you know it's, it's it loses something, but we need to adapt as I mentioned. So <laughs> one thing is changing, by the way, one thing is changing that when we are smoking sometime and we got a guy next to us, oh look at this, I'm, we are a different part of the cigar. Try this, and the guy goes, clean. that is going to change, right? That is right. no no forever. And you see it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys see it when you're talking to the other manufacturers and and they're smoking cigar. Oh. Oh, here, try this. It's a, oh, wow. And that is changing. That is that is definitely going to change. But we are adapting. And I think the one thing that I miss the most is going back to the factories, to Nicaragua, to Honduras, to Dominican, and, uh, and at the store, right? Visiting the store. That is another element that we we really need to change. Have you been to any cigar lounges since some have started to open up yet? Yes. Uh, locally here, yes. Um, I, I have to say hello uh, uh, locally because... Mostly, I think my wife is not listening, but mostly getting out of the house, you know, it's like <laughs> any place, right? Uh, so if I oh, I know, it, yeah, yeah. So I saw some posting of this store open and this store, <laughs> honey, I have to go. My wife, I just said, I, I, by the way, anything that in my wife they it needs, I said, oh, I can go and get it right now. I just need to get out of home all day, you know. It's uh, it's definitely yeah. So I have, I have. 
I haven't mentioned to you guys so far because it's a little bit more of a drive, but uh, but yes, locally I have. But your own custody of Monte Cristo in Palm Beach County also opened as well. So your your yeah. your your local stores, the Casa stores, have opened up. Yeah, it's opening up, and around the nation, it's in a different way. So that one in Boca Raton just opened up. Uh, right. At and and um, and we have been doing some live and things like that to tell people um, yeah so they have um, but they took just like you guys uh, many other retail stores have taken the time to rearrange the humidor to work on the on the on the physical part of the stores as well a lot of work has gone into that so we're taking that opportunity but around the nation the stores are opening differently based on the county on the city and and you know things like that so the, we, we're all at different states but we're extremely happy that um, Casa de Monte Cristo by Prime Cigars in Boca Raton is, is opening. It's funny, our, our Boynton headquarters, while all our other stars, stores had time to clean up and whatnot, our Boynton stores become like a war zone. <laughs> if, you, if you walked in our humidor, you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't, never believe it, Paul. Why? Because you have stuff everywhere in there since <laughs> consumers aren't going in? Because of the spike in the mail order and, and people ordering in, I mean, we, we, you know, whatever capacities that we had, limitations, we we had to find a way to work beyond them because that's what the business has done. So our humidors are filled to the ceilings in every corner. And there's nowhere more to put products. So now we're just right. lining stuff up on the floor. We have some full. We've uh, uh, eminent domain half our lounge area because no one is really using the lounge and put folding tables for expediting orders and you know, helping pull the guys for shipping. So wow. <laughs> while all the other stores all got tidy and neat, our Boynton store looks like a tornado's coming through. <laughs> the right world now. headquarters. Uh, well, you look, we're trying to appease a lot of people. You know, I mean, we're trying to, you know, a lot of guys still want to smoke. Like I, I've said many, many times, enjoying a cigar is part of our normalcy, you know? Yeah. When, you know, stripping, stripping a man or a woman, you know, stripping a person away of what their normalcies are is a way of breaking them. You know, and, and, and at some point in the day, enjoying a cigar, relaxing, enjoying a cigar, and especially for us in this community, the cigar community, socializing. I never understood the right. guy who likes to order from a catalog and sit on his patio and smoke by himself every day and never interacting. Because for me, the interaction is half of what I enjoy about cigar smoking, right? I mean, literally half. It could be as equal as the product. You know, if I smoked alone, I would enjoy half as much, Right. I mean, right. don't get me wrong. You have those relaxing sunset moments where you're kind of you know, meditating and enjoying a cigar. But I'm talking about in general, I'm always smoking around people. You know, I'll tell a buddy, hey, you want to go have a cigar? I even tell my wife, you want to go have a cigar with me out in the patio? I, you just like doing it. So, um, you know, it, it, it's uh, been quite a thing, experience this whole journey these last few months. But people are still wanting product. And uh, we're doing our best to accommodate everybody out there who wants uh to get the you know things that they're passionately enjoying every day. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely even even solitary. I mean, it, there's something to be said about smoking in a lounge with with other people and enjoying that social aspect. But even uh, from a solitary sense, here, you know, when kids finally go to bed and wife goes to bed, or we go our separate ways to have some alone time, sitting outside on the lanai out here in Florida because it's always nice at night. Uh, it's it's definitely a saving grace for me recently. So, but your um, your your wife doesn't smoke at all. Steph doesn't smoke cigars at all. She she does sometimes. So, okay. on a rare occasion, she will she will smoke a blondie or she'll smoke um, you know something something along those lines. So start, like uh, start you're, pairing you're, up, start pairing up some cigars with some good wine for her. That'll get her more into it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. When when we were at your grand opening in West Palm, actually, she she smoked a cigar and and enjoyed it. So she'll she'll once in a maybe once or twice a year, she'll smoke a cigar, but uh, definitely not as as frequently as me. But she's she's slowly getting there. You know what? It, it just it that that aspect of of uh, relaxing and enjoying things, you know, because she's a sommelier. It, it appeals she to her with cigars. Yeah, she understands it. She knows how to relate to it. So, right. Raphael, so, uh, does your wife smoke cigars, Raphael? Uh, sorry? You, my wife. wife. I, yeah, my wife does from time to time, but really not not a lot. Uh, however, I can tell you my wife's uh, her family has been on the cigar business for uh, five generations. Wow. They were cigars in Cuba. Uh, they are from Pinal del Rio. 
Um, and they moved here uh, to in 19, uh, at the beginning of their 70s, I believe, to Tampa because the Oliva family, not a cigar brand, but the Oliva growers, helped them to get into Tampa because they were the brokers that would buy their tobacco in Cuba. So this is a, a big generation uh, of tobacco. And then her, her father used to distribute Aurora cigar before Miami cigar did it. And then uh, her uncles uh, uh, work in Honduras uh, with, uh, with uh, Iroa for many years, went to Brazil to work on the new uh, Banos uh, Brazil in Iroa uh, with uh, Iroa's brother. So these are uh, my wife's family. Everybody has been on the cigar business except her and her two brothers that became physicians. And, uh, wow. and then uh, that's it. That's where it stopped. But everyone in that family is cigar related. Friends of the Placencia, the o Oliva Cigar Company, uh, the Oliva Tobacco Company. The, I mean, it is, it is a very a small community there. So all her life, she has been around of tobacco. And so when I decided to go into the cigar industry, and by the way, that's a, a funny thing because one hand bishop tell me, uh, work with me, and he thought that he, I was uh, being a Cuban. He asked me when I was working with him in this in uh, in healthcare. Hey, do you're Cuban? You smoke cigars? I said, no, I don't. So he took me to buy cigar to Nick Perdomo's uh, uh, place in Little Havana, right? And that's the first time I bought uh, a box of cigars from Nick and his uh, brother-in-laws, and I met his wife, and I smoked my first cigar. And uh, and that night I went to my to my wife and I said, I am going into the cigar business. And she said, Well, my whole family is on the cigar business, has been on the cigar business. So she gave me, for to start, three names, and it was Placencia, right? It was Estelo Padron, you know, friend of the family for a long time, and Iroa. I mean, <laughs> that was my first three contacts on the cigar industry, right? So That's some heavy like, hitters there. Mm -hmm. That's some heavy hitters, Absolutely. too. I got a KMA, ask KMA question. That's what I was just going to say. I'm putting it up on the screen. Go ahead. You want to do it? Go ahead. Yeah, we have a question from Eric. Um, are, will there be any changes to the Henry Clay line, Raphael? Yeah, yeah. Well, we continue. I'm glad you, you, he asked that. Henry Clay is one of those traditional lines. By the way, Henry Clay is a Cuban line, right? And for a long time, we had it in the United States with a broad leaf wrapper. We brought in uh, a fantastic new product that it was uh, uh, the Henry Clay Warhawk. Uh, changed the direction. I still use the broad leaf, but as a binder, and use a, a Connecticut uh, Ecuadorian wrapper uh, coming from our La Flor de Copan in Honduras. And that was just ready in 93 last week, ready in 93 by Cigar Aficionado, something that it, we're very proud of. But, so we're going to continue that expansion that way. We're coming up with something very recent, very soon uh, in a special edition. And then we continue the journey of that. That's definitely a brand that we believe uh, changing that direction. Listen, that brand was doing okay, but then... Um, the, the company before I got here came up with uh, with uh, Pete Johnson and they did a tatuaje and that what gave it some tremendous push. I think at the IPCPR that a small production was sold in half an hour. So definitely something. And from there on, we continue to expand that. And so yes, this is one. You see, we have amazing brands in the portfolio besides the Romeo, the Monte Cristo, the Sherman, something like Trinidad that we recently also. Are going in a different direction, something like Henry Clay. So we have amazing brands that we are are bringing it back. They're all grandfathers and things like that. We're trying to bring back with new looks and new consumer, uh, uh, paying attention to what the consumer is needing. So Henry Clay is one of those that we are we have a lot of faith on it. I got a question about the Henry Clay Warhawk. Now, was that a project that was made at the MyFodger factory that Pete was involved in and then sold to Altus to distribute? Or was that a product that, where was that, where was that product made? So that product was made because it's no longer the market, although maybe some right. tourists still have. But that was, no, that was actually, uh, um, as I, I, it was before me, but uh, as the story goes, uh, um, Pete Johnson had always been a believer of the brand, uh, loved the brand for a long, long time. And uh, Big basically he worked yeah. on the brand. Yeah, he worked on the blend, but he made it. We made it at uh, Tabacalera de Garcia, but it was okay. So he came the, down there and just worked with developing of the development of the blend. That's correct. That's correct. But it was made at uh, at Tabacalera de Garcia. 
that's that's what an amazing project that cigar fantastic and uh he put so basically that that was the beginning of many of the collaborations that we're doing right so you get someone that is uh, love the brands love this and then puts their touch in a in a in a very classical brand and i think that not many people have done it uh, right but these companies definitely have, uh, have expanded and i'm a big believer in collaborations i love to work with uh people in the industry that are masters, that they bring their approach, and then together we come up with a new idea. Absolutely. And uh, now, Rafael, it's been a pleasure. We are uh, Stick around. We are going to talk to our uh, good friend and uh, our news informant, the man who needs very little introduction, Mr. William Cooper. Cooperloo, what is happening, buddy? Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Raphael. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. So uh, it looks like we're back in the study. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, it was the easiest place to get set up today. I actually slept a little late, so. <laughs> have you have you read all the books in the study, Coop? Um, I've read none of the books probably in the study. <laughs> is, uh, is that an Encyclopedia Britannica behind you? Uh, World Book Encyclopedia up there. Okay. Yeah, that, those are those are from. I mean, I was in high school when when I acquired those. <laughs> I mean, are the they Encyclopedia all real books? came around. Yeah, they're all real books. So you don't have, like, a hidden safe in there? I mean, nobody knows where you live. You could show us the hidden safe. If you <laughs> no, have. no. I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the books on my wife's book, she's the avid reader in the house. Um, cool. And they just look nice in here, so. Uh, did you earn any of the trophies there on your right? <laughs> Absolutely none of them. Um, those are, like, there's some swimming trophies over there from my, my, old, my kids, and I can't, and people know I can't swim. Yeah. So no, they're not mine. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot about that. I can Um, I, I there's one of mine like in the far corner there. You can't see. It. It's like a sales trophy. That's it. Is that the bobblehead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just so, had a perfect idea for a new for a new segment. Coop learns to swim, and we and we broadcast your swimming lessons. Ooh. <laughs> that's, that's, I'll teach him. <laughs> yeah, we. Abe has a big pool in his backyard. His son will do. His, Abe's son's a, a, an avid swimmer too. Wow. We, they could the, between the two of them. My, my my son like swims like a little Navy SEAL torpedo, dude. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> there was almost Literally. a rescue mission that happened at the media house last year when I was in the five feet of water, five five and a half feet of water, and suddenly uh, I realized where I was. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't so want to learn how to swim before you die, Coop. Why? <laughs> Wow, you know, it's such a part of our lives here. Maybe, but even when I lived in New York, it's such. I always had pools in my backyard. I, it's such a part of our lives in Florida for sure. If you ever move down here, you have to learn to swim. Well, yeah, I You're guess surrounded so. by water. I mean, Paul, I was playing on the open fire hydrants in New York. Honestly, it really was. Yeah, you do were in the city. Do, I was on Long Island. Do, yeah. Do, do your kids swim? Yeah, in fact, my two older ones are have won trophies. And none, They're competitive. They're competitive. And none of them insisted on teaching you how to swim. No. Wow. You know, I just said have a real. You must have a real swim. good. You must have a real good life insurance policy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Dad! The neighbors are having a pool party. Come on up. Let's go. Let's go hang out. <laughs> Well, look at this! Wow. Look at this mansion they're living in. With every every week, Coop's in a different room. So yeah, I mean they're they're welcoming. <laughs> you know that this but I must, the quarantine where, where, where the room that I Coop is in has become up, one man. of the hottest topics. I'm yeah. sorry, Raphael. What was that? I'm sorry. I was saying that I love his setup in the in the in the dining room. Uh, that is classic. Oh, yeah. I love it. I, my kids had texted me when I was not watching. Do you do you look at that? It's all set up for Christmas. <laughs> Fantastic. It, it, yeah, those are those are like really rooms I love. Like I said, I don't let anyone in those rooms except at Christmas time. <laughs> That's great. So, Coop, as anticipated, what we talked about last week, we got a big announcement this week uh, in regards to the PCA. And when we knew we talked, we said it was going to be rumored last week, but it finally came out. Yeah, you know, um, I'll say this: that the message was a little better controlled this time than with CigarCon. But let's be real, this leaked out. Abe and I knew about this um, a week ago, so there was no s surprises. Um, I knew the story was coming on Thursday. Well, well, I should say that. I knew the story was coming this week, but I was very well ready for that story to come out on Thursday, uh, which is why it was up so quick. So uh, it, it wasn't up quick, you know, wasn't up quick otherwise. 
So yeah, I, I actually heard I had actually heard the week before May 11th. Right. So on May, 11th, I had heard like that Wednesday or Tuesday and I heard they were going to make the announcement on May 11th, which they didn't. But, yeah, it was it was out there floating around. I mean, what it was very clear there wasn't activity happening on the trade show front. So, you know, when you get into the trade show in July, this is like the busiest time of the year for the PCA. Um, they're, they're dealing with booth sales, logistics and all that. Uh, what I've seen is the PCA doing podcasts like I do the last few weeks, right? You wouldn't have to – we all know on this call the work that goes into putting on a show. You, you wouldn't be doing podcasts if this show wasn't getting canceled, right? There was no registration to register your people to go to the trade show. You know, right. there was, the, the hints were out there. I don't understand the strategy of why PCA insisted on saying that trade show was on for so many weeks. They could have taken the strategy like Inner Tobacco did, where they Inner Tobacco was a lot more transparent, saying we're going to evaluate what the situation versus the regulations that the government's going to set versus safety, and we'll make a call at some point. They chose not to do that route, um, and I, I don't quite understand that strategy. However, in the end, no one's going to argue that the right decision was made. Hundred percent, absolutely. With Vegas setting up, especially with Vegas setting up these whole guidelines of 250 people in a convention and all of these other varying things they're trying to do to try and reopen, it's just it would have been impossible. Yeah, so I, are they canceling completely or are they doing a different date? I, I didn't read the release. Canceled. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it, doing another date doesn't really work for that function. And, and you know, look, there's a million factors on why it was a good idea to just cancel this year. Whether it be the fiscal ability of a lot of retailers who could to go during what's going on right now, whether it be the health risks of going, and I mean, let's face it, you know, they, of all the places, you know, Vegas can't be one of the best places to be, right? Getting on an airplane, so and there, 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 was, there was, there was, there, I don't think there was really one good reason to have it this year. I mean, I don't think anybody's happy that it's not going on, but I just. So I don't think I don't think there was really another option at any given point. No, but I mean, I don't I would like a little more explanation on what what was why why it took with, you know, less than six, you know, went within that 60 day window. I'd like to understand why that happened. What, you know, was it the 250 convention rule that was the factors, Um, you know, like 10 days after was, they announced. Go ahead, Abe. I'm sorry. I, I, I would say I think part of them was still hoping that there may have been a way. You know, I think the 250 rule really kind of puts in the old coffin for them. Yeah, no, it definitely did. But, you know, even 10 days after they made the announcement in March that the show was on, that's when the NBA shut down, the NCAA tournament was over. We were starting to see businesses shut down. At that point, when we started to see cigar cigar retailers shutting down and manufacturers, factories shutting down, that should Large have been a sign. Large smoke getting canceled. The right. Big smoke, the big smoke getting canceled. Yeah, you would have think that would have been the time to say, all right, you know what? The industry's forget the fact whether COVID's over or not. The industry's not going to be ready to have a celebratory type of thing, considering the losses financially and and personally people were taking during this period of time. That's why I, I just quite don't understand. What well, other companies had no problems canceling their stuff. At that point in July, the PCA for some reason had a problem canceling that, and and it, I want to understand it, what was unique it, about that. I really do. Talked about it. it may it may had to have done something with contractual obligations, hoping that you know, depending on how it gets canceled, you know, that there may be some right. obli uh, you know obligations that they could have been relieved of. But I mean, as far as I know, any contract that I've seen so far always had some kind of pandemic clause. So. Yeah, if the show got canceled because of a pandemic, I don't think they would be covered anyway. But yeah, I, I, I'm only speculating. So yeah, there's something called business continuity. Okay, and I, I can tell you, I deal with this a lot. Um, business continuity is the ability to continue to execute business, and, and a lot of contracts have business continuity clauses. That's why I kind of don't understand what was so complicated about this, because like I said, other other companies that were doing trade shows in Vegas had no problems. Was there something unique about our contract? Maybe I don't know, but I'm just saying other companies had no problems on, on postponements um, go, going down the line. And yet, for some reason, this soap opera had to go 
to a, a, a little before two weeks before Memorial Day weekend. So, Coop, you, did everybody who put their deposits down, because usually they, we talked about this at last year, uh, anybody who put a deposit down, are they is that going to roll over, or has they said anything about that at this point? They have not said anything about that at this point. Well, so, Skip Martin suggested yeah, on our show that it should be it should be a donation that people could just donate it. Remember? So, yeah. So this is where I have a problem, and and this is where people were jumping on me about. Okay, this was not communicated directly to the retailers when the announcement was made. They chose to go cigar aficionado on exclusive route. I get that. Look, I can I can argue about that. But this what this needed to be is this needed to be announced to the retailers along with prescriptive guidance, Q's and A's. These are the things and, and the exhibitors. These are the things that means like right? that's what you normally do when you make an announcement as magnitude. As far as I'm aware, none of those Q&A's occurred there right now. And that, that's why I had a problem how this was announced. They, they didn't seem ready for that. The PCA has had a long history of poor communication. I, I think they're making yeah. small steps to try to prove it. Right. But they've never have communicated downwardly, whether it be to their memberships to their manufacturers right. and especially to media right? right so that's just never been their strong suit no i mean but again if someone's plopping down like a, like um a, you know a lot of money for booze or even just buying a lot of you know paying their dues and stuff i don't have a problem media exclusives are part of the game i get it to use this type of something of this magnitude as a media exclusive for whatever reason they felt the need to do that where you really are the pca like you acknowledge, it has a problem communicating with its members. Why they didn't just use this opportunity to really, hey, this is a chance we can really reach out to our members, embrace them. We're here. We're here. They've done some good stuff with COVID, with some COVID business continuity guidelines. I'll say that part. But with the trade show, I just don't think they 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 dropped the ball with this one. It could have been a, a win for them, and they, they chose not to go that way. Yeah, it's uh, it was interesting, but hey, we'll see what happens. So moving on to, couple to K- more S- interesting. We got a couple of S- KMA questions. First off, Paul, somebody wants to know if you could whistle. If I can whistle? Not not Paul. I'm sorry. Coop. Coop no. Oh, Coop. I absolutely okay. cannot whistle. So, the, 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 really? <laughs> so you oh can't God. swim. You can't whistle. Wow, Coop. You got a lot of things against you, man. Can, can you I, walk I can, and chew gum at the same time? I can walk and chew gum <laughs> at the same time, right? I can, uh, you know, I can hop. Uh, you know, I, 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 I medical you know, condition. No, I'm just, you know, I'm not very talented. That's why I just, you know, I ended up smoking not, cigars. <laughs> have you ever done a cartwheel? Not, not in recent years. Many, many years ago, I think I was able to pull off a cartwheel. That's an office. That's an office reference. <laughs> I, that's why. That's why I went over my head. That, that shows. I watch the old shows. You know. I've that's never great. heard of a of an adult that can't whistle. This is my first. I, I, I can could, I could blow a smoke ring. <laughs> can you sing? Does that count? <laughs> cool. oh God, can, you sing? So can you sing at all? Can you yeah, sing I, 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 I can sing a little, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. All right. That's well, so uh, karaoke. Cool. Moon, we're, we're doing karaoke next time you're in town. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, there's karaoke. By the way, there is karaoke video from a dojo trip uh, to Nicaragua of me. I'll have to find Ooh. that. There is some karaoke of me doing... Uh, uh, in excess, which is the band, one of my favorite bands. So, so wow. uh, there's also a video of me doing um, Daft Punk's "Get Lucky" on a bus on that same dojo trip. I don't have the footage, Abe. I'm sure you'll find a way to get the footage now, but it does exist. <laughs> I'm gonna put it out there. We'll find it. I think it's public. I think it's out there somewhere. I just don't have it, nor did I request it. <laughs> Um, Raphael, well, Raphael, there's, a, there's a big karaoke. I I know, no, I don't. I I've done it. I've done it, uh, but I normally I don't keep, do. But I, I can see you doing a really smooth Julio Iglesias. <laughs> the all, all the girls <laughs> I've loved before. Okay. That's, that's, that's oh. on the alcohol level, right? So I I do I do be known to sing a lot, especially those Mexican uh, rancheras. Uh, but uh, but that depends on the tequila level. But uh, uh, no, no. we'll get you some margaritas. It'll be no problem. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Funny. Listen, I'm always up for karaoke. Just just so everyone well, knows, anytime we've ever the, done a road trip, we do karaoke. You're the guy in 
from them, I'll actually say I know can sing very well. So mm-hmm. that doesn't count. <laughs> it doesn't count. Well, if I ever do karaoke, it's only Johnny Cash because that's about the closest range I can get to of any, anybody. <laughs> what about Barry only White? Johnny right. Oh, Barry White. Well, yeah, that. but Barry, Johnny Cash just seems easier. Barry White, you have to exude the sexualness, too, you know? Hey, baby. <laughs> right? Dumb. It's, it's, Dumb. It's, you have to exude a lot more than just, you know, Johnny Cash is pretty much straight singing, and I could do I could do a better Johnny Cash than anybody. That's 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 the limitations of my karaoke. <laughs> so you have a great voice for that. Absolutely. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. You have a great That's about it. I could sound halfway plausible. They all don't get up and leave the room if I'm doing Johnny Cash. Mm-hmm. Now, I try to do four non-blondes like Eric Espinosa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Coop, is there anything else going on in the world? Uh, wait, of this wait hold on, hold on. Oh, we have a question from, from, from Jeanette in our audience, mm-hmm. and, and we wanted to talk about this because it involves our own Honest Abe. Uh, Jeanette wants Uh-oh. to know, is Coop looking forward to the jerky contest? The Great American Jerk-Off, why don't you give that a little... A little plug, Coop. Tell us a little bit about it. So everybody, it's Monday, right? It, it's Monday at 9.30. Uh, we'll have it on Facebook Live. And I, look, I'm really honored that uh, Abe, uh, Randy Griggs, and Sean Mile uh, asked me to be a part of this. Um, they asked me to judge this. Um, I kind of was very int- intrigued by the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't take credit for the name. I'll tell people. That's Abe's credit. Right? <laughs> right? But uh, but but I kind of, I've always wanted to do an eating contest or a a food contest, let's say, in the cigar in the cigar world for a while. So, um, I I was intrigued because no one the, the jerk the jerky idea was really good. Um, so it's basically going to be they have submitted uh, their their jerkies. Um, and Jeanette was like an instrumental part of this because Jeanette had to basically get all the jerkies, vacuum seal them, blind blind them up, right? So I don't know what they are, and ship them to me, right? So. I have the I have the beef jerky. It's under um you know it's under temperature control right now, um <laughs> so uh, sealed um they'll and they'll be ready on Monday, so you know we're gonna go through we're gonna see what, what happens you know there's gonna be uh there's one mango habanero I think is the featured uh jerky and then there is like a wild card one where everyone did a specialty jerky as well, um. And I, like I said, I get to be the judge. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. It's going to be good for who wins, and it's going to be everyone, the two who lose, is going to be mad at me. That's how, that's how it works, right? So, Coop, are you doing anything between now and Monday to prepare your palate or completely cleanse the palate at all to prepare? Um, on Monday, what I'll say is I will not smoke until the jerky competition is over that night out, out of respect for the competitors. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, that's gonna be harder. dedication right there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's gonna be harder to do. So, so I won't be light. Yeah, I won't be lighting up on a. I'll light up on the sh- on the show once I am finished with the tasting. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I'll be I'll be doing that. Um. There's some other like like Jeff Borchwitz gave me an idea of sampling some other jerkies. So I have some other things I'm gonna sample, but just to kind of know what's good or what's bad, kind of get ready for that. You know, for that I moment. See. We lost you there, Abe. Abe just went, yeah. Did you hit the button? He there, muted. There's a little tab that every now and then I accidentally hit on this thing that mutes me. Yeah. I, I actually saw that Jeff make that recommendation. I didn't like it. Okay, well, because... I'm not I, I'm not going to have Chandler buy what he wanted, but I am just kind of sampling jerkies to make sure yeah. that, you know, okay, these, you know, some things I need, I know I need to look for pretty much with that. Right. We did uh, this competition by the seat of our pants, right? It just happened, you know. Me and Randy and then Sean jumped on. But I'm telling you this now. We've already talked. I'm making this into a big thing next year. Oh. With a panel and a criteria and you, invitations and a structure. And, uh, you know, this is just like a little pilot episode of what's going to be in 2021. You guys should dress in drag for <laughs> the jerky contest. Well, what is this obsession with continuously drag? It's like no one's ever going to get past okay. drag. Everything's got to come back to being in drag all the time. Because you I keep wear saying a bathrobe you want to do it every drag. year. <laughs> I want to make a charity function to help raise money for breast cancer every year that would involve a drag event. But it doesn't mean every aspect of life becomes now drag, Paul. Relax. I know you're getting excited. Can I tell you a true story about this drag competition? So oh last, yes. last year, Sokka, I think, put up a link to the Moomoo or whatever he was wearing, right, on his Facebook page. And I was dumb enough to click on that thing. You know, now since then, I get, like, 
Moo Moo showing up in my Facebook feed since then. Like, <laughs> That's great. Like, what That's the? Great. Is it? <laughs> it's the gift that keeps on giving. I, it's just That's horrible. I, I can't get rid of them. So, uh, R- Raphael, would you participate in a drag competition? Well, let, let me tell you, I. Uh, <laughs> No, the, again, depends the amounts of tequila. And uh, yes, I would love to. Uh, I have no I embarrass myself every single day, okay? So I have to tell you, I, I don't mind embarrassing myself. I don't feel anything. My, my, my kids make me embarrass my day. I would love to participate. And that was, by the way, I've been some 31st. I spent some New Year's in Key West. And uh, I can tell you that I might be a, a pro on this. <laughs> no, 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 that's not. But I can. I will do it. I will do it just for charity and for age. Right. I will. Right. Real men don't get embarrassed. <coughs> Eric Espinosa. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy Real Griggs. Don't Randy Griggs just said there will be no dresses as long as I am involved. I put that yeah, on the well. screen for everybody to see. No one I'm wants to see Randy in or out of a dress, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, Coop, we're looking forward to this. Yeah. Are you are are you like? Is there anything else you're doing? Like, what about food? Like, are you are you just calling off all fast food for the weekend before you go in there to make sure your palate's not chemically? Yeah, I mean, there'll be no spicy food, that's for sure. Um, with that, so so yeah, we'll make. Like I said, I want to make sure the palate is clean. Uh, that night, uh, I'll drink water. I, I made three batches last night. that are sitting in. I marinade. saw that on Facebook. Sure. I saw that on Facebook. They're going to be the most yeah, epic I think, jerky I've made to date, all right? I mean, because yeah. I, I, I experimented with the sexy fire, which which you're going to get the sexy jerky, right? I experimented with the sexy jerky. So that came out good, right? But, you know, first time you experiment with something, it doesn't, you know, you got to make your little tweaks. Mm-hmm. So this time, right. I, I, I think the process, that sexy jerky is going to be better. But then I added a sexy jerky fire, all right? And I'm Oof. just telling you, this thing is going to be flaming, flaming. And then I did an, a batch of orange beef, which uses real uh, orange zest, so it tastes like Chinese orange beef in a Chinese restaurant. Oh! So I think this next, this next batch, I'll I'll throw them in the de- it should be ready to go in the dehydrator tonight, by eight ten o'clock by uh, by uh, tomorrow e- uh, evening uh, we'll be tasting out some new jerky. Let me tell you, you guys are making me uh, hungry. Eh? It's yeah, like I can out to go and buy some uh, jerky. Uh, oh my god! You- yeah. I, I think, you know, Paul, you know, being from New York, you know, we had the Nathan's hot dog eating contest and in Philly oh, we yeah. had Wing Bowl. I actually wanted to do something like that in a cigar business, but a lot of people were afraid for, uh, you know, insurance reasons of doing that. So taking the food competition into a preparation piece, I think is a lot more. It's it's better. It's just I think it'll be just as exciting. And uh, Gabe said, I think this is something that we can do. It grow certainly grow this. He's got some great ideas, and this is something I'm I'm privileged to be a part of the launch of this. So, so Monday night, at Next what time year is it? we have to invite Skip Martin to make his sous vide jerky. <laughs> uh, yeah, the 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 jerking off begins at nine thirty. <laughs> and uh, on, on the on the scoop with coop on facebook right right uh and uh yep i'll be i'll be like i said i i have the best job that night so uh but but then i know like i said and i'll just make one statement the the judge's decision is final here there's there's no whining there's no complaining from anybody that's <laughs> this, well this, able well, able be fine as long as he wins I, that's I'm gonna happen i'm predicting a sean miles third Ooh. Uh, now he see, claims, he claims, he claims that he sent, because we all sent each other some of our jerkies so we could try it, right? So he claims that he sent Coop a better batch than what he sent Randy and myself. But based on the batch I saw, yeah, dude, if there was fifth place in this competition, Sean uh, would be getting fifth. Yeah, I mean, there's a that's strategy much. there. I, I think Randy's the favorite. I think we can agree that Randy's, you know, I, you know. Randy may be the favorite here, you know, compared to you and Randy, Sean. Right now. Randy, without a doubt, has quality looking jerky, and he has been doing it longer. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a only a year into jerky making, so right, right. But so I, think I, I am, I, I am very well known in taking things to the next level. Right, we make the best yep. cappuccinos ever in my shop. We make the best Bloody Marys ever in my shop. Because when I get into something, I like to take it as far as I can go. Right. Well, so, it should be interesting. So Monday night at nine thirty. Get to the uh, the Cigar Coop Facebook page. You'll see it on Facebook Live. We'll, we'll all be watching. I, I can't wait for it. I'm, I'm thinking I may, like, try to get some jerky from Abe 
before then, so I have well, some I, to try. I, I tell you what, stop by Sunday. I'll leave some. I'll yeah. you grab some. I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have some done by Sunday night. It, it, That's awesome. Yeah, you know what's funny? I, I had to keep the jerky away from everyone else in the house. It does look really good. And I'm saying, look, yeah, they all is, I only have a limited amount here. It's enough for the show. I said, that's it. There wasn't like mountains of it sent to me. So, Coop, Coop are you going to cleanse the palate between each sampling? Are there some, do, you have a, do you have any particular things you're going to do as to make sure you have a fresh palate each time you try? Oh, I may use some salsa water that night. I think it would be the best thing um, would to do that. So, or but, lemon yeah. sorbetto. Yeah, I mean, I could go with that, too. A little citrus sometimes does work with that. Um, I'm a little afraid. I, pickle juice is something I do use to cleanse the palate, seriously. I'm a little – I don't know how that would work with jerky, though, because there's a salt component. There's a heavy yeah. salt component to that. But pickle juice is something I use to cleanse the palate for cigars, and it works really, really good. Really? Yes. I did not know I that. love the seriousness. I love the seriousness that Coop is taking – Oh, he's hardcore, man. He's I love hardcore. It. Listen, I was entrusted to do this, right? So, um, you know, I just want to make sure I do a fair job with everybody. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> people are talking about this, right? I got everyone asking me about this thing. Um, you know, um, so there, it's exciting. Yeah, Very cool, Coop. I can't wait. To, it's going to be a great time. Make sure everybody tunes in on 9:30 on Monday nights. What else are you doing? It's a Monday. There's no sports. There's no sports, um, and I think there's only four or five podcasts on that night. So I think you'll be in good. <laughs> you know, I think only four or five cigar companies doing their podcasts that night. Uh, Coop, what do you got planned for the rest of the week? Okay. Um, so yeah, so we got I got some content coming up on Cigar Coop. Uh, actually, um, reviews are going to be coming out the next few weeks. Uh, like the next week, uh, the Tatuai Chuck's getting reviewed. Uh, there'll be a Nat Sherman a Polka Cigar reviewed. So stay tuned for that. We have guests. Uh, Lito Gomez is doing our Tuesday show. Mm-hmm. And Manuel oh, cool. Noah from La Aurora is doing the Thursday show, so we have a pretty big, big week ahead. Oh, and you got Jeff Borschwitz, our buddy from Corona, coming up. He was he, on. He, he just was up. Good job, good job, Adam. <laughs> no, he was just on. Uh, so that show is up now. Uh, and Jeff had some really candid thoughts on the whole PCA thing because we happen he, to have him on really tonight. He really did. Yeah. I didn't watch the whole show yet, but I, Jeff's always interesting for me to 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 watch and listen to because he's kind of like Abe, where he doesn't really like censor himself and whether it's on purpose or not it's it, he's very interesting he always has a lot of great things to say but i was watching some of that i have it facebook now has a thing where you can click to save the video to watch later yeah so it's 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 on there for me to watch the rest of the show but it it's a good one if you i mean it's up on your on the scoop with coop now so check it out it was i was super into it i just you know there's a lot of distractions in this house i, I, I also <laughs> i also i always love jeff's delivery his delivery is it's always so nice and calm. You know, I'm like a bull. We agree on a lot of stuff. But I'm like a bull in a china shop, half the time, right? <laughs> you know, I just I just want to run through and knock over stuff. And when, and Jeff is always just so his cadence is so calming and yeah. informative. You know, he, he delivers he delivers things so much better. Yeah, yeah, he he definitely does. And there's certainly like I said, he doesn't hold anything back either. No, no. That's one of the reasons why we get along so good, right? I mean, we sat on boards together. You know, we, we both have that personality where we don't hold things back. Where, you know, he just seems to have a little more patience, and I'm just like want to, you know, hammer and drill things in. So. Yeah. His kid. Well, cool, Coop. Better. Anything, anything else coming up uh, at cigar-coop.com that we should all know about? Um, you know, there's gonna be probably some of the analysis of the fallout of the PCA trade show. There's a lot more questions I need answered. I think before. I can write anything, and so I got to see, you know, how I can do that. So I mean, that's going to be, and then we're going to be getting into just like, just like with if there was a trade show, we're we're expecting there'll be product release uh, information coming out for the summer um, because stuff was already planned. So we'll be covering that uh, as usual um, right now with that. So um, and then combine that with the reviews there. But I think we'll you'll see some post analysis on the PCA over the next few weeks. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Uh, so Raphael, uh, what else are you going to do this weekend? Well, this weekend I'm, uh, I, I am actually resting tomorrow and, uh, this afternoon. So I, I, I've, I've been uh, cooking a lot, so I'm going to be trying some new, uh, some new Spanish, uh, uh, recipe. I started on the new modern recipe. So actually, you know, I will do what I do better, best, which is eat a lot, drink a lot and smoke a lot. And, uh. And, and that's it. And that, that's my weekend plan. I, it do, sounds terrific. Do you have a 
do you have a go-to meal that is like your signature dish you cook? I, you know, I, yeah, uh, for me, it's shrimp, shrimp Creole. We call it, uh, in Spanish, we call it camarones enchilado. And, and that's for me, is like comfort food, right? So you, it's, it's like a, a red uh, tomato base sauce. And then you, you put the shrimps and then you have it with rice normally. And, and, and that's what I remember from Cuba. We didn't have a lot of food in Cuba, right? So we, uh, whenever we have this, it was like, wow, like a, a, like a happy place. And whenever I need a happy place, and lately I need a lot of happy places very often, I have gone to this, uh, to this dish. So uh, I love to create new things. And what happened, you know, uh, uh, cooking is like a few hours a day that you can create stuff. And, 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 uh, and I love creating, so I cannot do it with the music. So I've been doing it with the music so much. But I, uh, and I'll be practicing a little bit of piano because on Thursday I want to do this plug. I, on, I will be doing a, a live on Instagram, just music, cigar, and, and wine. No talking. Oh, cool. Just, I'll be playing the piano so you guys can check it out. And uh, uh, Aging Room Cigars, uh, Thursday, 5.30 on Instagram. Just going to be playing piano for 15, 20 minutes. No music, just uh, not nothing, just but music, cigar, and wine, and that uh, nice. seems like a summary. Yeah, seems like a summary of my life lately at night. I, you know, it's uh, that's how I've been dealing with all these things: eating, drinking, and and playing music. So I'll play a little bit of piano, practice a little bit. I put out my violin, which I have not done in the, in many years, and uh, I've been listen. I've been doing. I don't know about you guys, but I've been I've been doing stuff that I have not. Uh, been able to do for a long time, right? I have a list of stuff that I needed to do at home, and I've been pulling all those lists and doing stuff. And uh, practicing violin is one of those that I keep postponing because I am so bad these days that I got the violin, I got it tune up, I got it clean, and ready to go. So this is uh, that's great. Do yeah, you have yeah, a yeah, song? Yeah. Do you have already have a song list or a playlist set out that you're gonna do or? Yeah, well, you know, for this, like, like, yeah, for that life uh, on Thursday at 5.30 on the Aging Room Cigar. You see how good I'm turning? And Aging Room Cigars at 5.30 Thursday night. I am planning to to do just a music from when I was a kid, when I got into music, that is really relaxing music. So very easy piano, things that you can sit down and, and enjoy. And we call it the wine uh uh, wind uh, wind down Thursday because it's going to be wine and you know beginning of the week going down and um, it's just going to be easy music something you can relax at. my wife is a lot into meditation and things so this is like a very easy piano that uh, will get you set in the mood for relaxing and that's what I mean. that's great um, we we do that at our house too but we play like uh, itsy bitsy spider twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> well you're in that space. I went through that. My kids are all grown up. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I learned how to play Lava and Frozen, <laughs> so that the so that the kids can sing on the karaoke machine. That's but, fun. That'll be great to look forward to. Parents with small kids are my adults on this time. It's great to spend some time with the kids and this and. But I also know that what a challenge to me present yesterday in the middle of all my meetings and all that that I had a full schedule yesterday. We had our grandson because we were babysitting yesterday because the parents said, I cannot deal with this anymore. Please take it. <laughs> uh, so I know that feeling. I, and, yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, so I, I feel for you. You guys are my adults. Right? I have to tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. There's the boy right there. There he is. Uh, that's been the best part about this whole thing. Been a lot of time. Yeah, I- <laughs> there he is. I've seen you, Abe, uh, doing the cooking and the time, the meal times that are day longer, and you get time to talk with the family, right? Mine yeah, I mean, listen. Of- yeah, I mean, look, it's just, it's been fun. Like we were all up last night watching movies, me and the kids in the living room about, know, around midnight. They were hungry. I ended up making some fried egg sandwiches for everybody. So. Was I just doing a Joe Biden? I think I was just doing a Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sent me that video last night. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I think that's what happened. I watched that video last night. I started doing a Joe Biden in my own <laughs> <laughs> Uh Well, we want to thank everybody. Coop, thank yeah. you. We'll, thank uh, you, guys. Yeah. We can't wait till Monday night. Yeah, it's going to be and, exciting. Um, I'm hoping everyone tunes in and has a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. And make sure if you're tuning in, you get your own jerky 
or uh, go find a dehydrator and ma start making your own jerky. Everybody needs a new hobby at this time. It's going to be big in 2021, I'm telling you. This is going to be the big thing in the And I want to be Every one of the sponsors, right? I want to be one of the sponsors for next year, so I want to oh, be our guy. Look at that, Coop. Yeah. We got your sponsors already. Look at that. I'll tell you why we couldn't have a backing. Yeah, the Great American awesome. Jerk Off, brought to you by Aging Room Cigars, coming in 2021. <laughs> 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 Maybe we can use H. Oman. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> okay, we'll, we'll make it by the Great American Jerk Off by H. Upman Cigars. Uh, <laughs> We'll, we, we'll specify the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I'm sure he'll be okay with that, too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, we are winding down. Next week, we are going to talk to uh, Tanya Borshowitz. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Tanya was our first COVID cancellation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was almost two months ago that we now yes. finally talked to Tanya. It literally was almost, it'll be just over two months. That oh, yeah. Talk back on. So uh, we'll be great to Speaking talk. Speaking of Jeff, it's per perfect topic right now. We'll we'll definitely uh, speak to her. You know what's great is I, I watched the show on Facebook so I could see what everybody else was seeing. And you know when you have your volume down, there's an automatic caption thing. Yeah, that's right? a new so Facebook feature. Right, so it's, it's captioning the commentary. I can't wait to see what the caption tries to come up with when Tanya's talking. <laughs> It's gonna be hilarious. Oh, I should take be... screenshots. I should take screenshots during the show of what's coming across the caption, and go reference it later to see the discrepancies. I bet you there'll be some funny stuff there. It'll be comical, Raphael. Thank you for being here, everybody. Make sure you turn into Raphael on uh, Thursday night Thursday. at five thirty at five thirty on Instagram live. Hey, just some quality chill hangout time and playing the piano and smoking cigars. What can be better? What can be Can't better? Wait. Thank you very much, guys, for having me. Abe, uh, I, I absolutely love what you being guys have been doing, and all of you on this show. It's something for me to be an honor. I love it. I, this is how I pass my Saturday, and to be part today of uh, this family is an important thing for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are uh, always, ha always a pleasure having you on. Thanks for thanks yeah. for being on the show again, Raphael. And thank you very much. Hopefully next time we talk to you, you can fully dress up and everything and suit up completely. Well, I have my and it'll be in person. Oh no! no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in this week. Uh, next week, Tanya Borshowitz. Till then, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, keep it lit.